Welcome back to Elevate Her. It's Jess Mars. And today's topic is how to not let people get to you. So I just want to start off by saying this was something that took so long. Like I'm not even kidding. Probably last year was when I really started to learn how to not let that happen or affect me. And I'm 29 this year. I mean, I'm 29 now. Oh my gosh. Yes, I am. So it's been a while. But I really believe that when you walk with God and when you understand that Jesus was never nice, he was not a people pleaser. He didn't, you know, stoop down to anyone's level. If anything, he tried to educate them and then he walked off. Like he didn't entertain things like that, you know. And I think when you start to look at him in that way, you're like, oh, what am I doing? (laughs) You know? So that's why I thought I'd make this topic because talk about this topic because I just feel like it really, it's something that I wish someone told me. So that's why I'm like, let's talk about it together. Okay. I want to just start off by saying that no one's perfect and even we have flaws and there are things that we might think that don't annoy people, but annoy them right like we always have this tendency to believe or think that we are perfect and we don't annoy anyone but really there are a lot of things that you know probably we don't think about that annoy someone and they have to deal with it so just remember that everyone is doing their best on this earth right no one's perfect okay let's get into it (laughs) so I just want to say okay you can't always control where you live like sometimes you have to live with your family or you know you're around someone that you just like they're maybe your husband's family or you know a friend of a friend or something where in the case scenario you can't physically remove yourself out of so let's start there and then we'll work our way to the easier situations okay I just want to start off by saying if someone is truly bothering you and doing your head in or being a type of way that you don't like to associate with, right? There are a few things you can do. I always love to make my room my safe space. So for example, that is the place I'll go to to zen, to relax, because that is me. I control that whole area, right? Hopefully you have your own room. If not, even your bed section, you could have like a little plant or a flower or just your journal, but you know that that little spot is your relaxation spot. And I'm telling you, it helps so much having a small piece of environment that is completely just filled with good energy. Just, just you can feel it. You can feel when the energy is clear and you can feel when it's cluttered and dark, right? There's this analogy that I love to think of and it goes back to environment, right? So say, for example, we don't smoke. Okay. And well, we don't, but I don't, hopefully you don't either. And, um, we, you're going into a room full of smokers, but you don't smoke, right? But you're in this room and everyone's smoking. Okay. Now what's going to happen? That smoke is going to rub off on you. So when you leave, you're going to be like, Oh, I, I have this weird smell. It's like on my clothes. It's in my hair. It's on my body. That's the same thing with energy. So if you are around people consistently that are bringing you down and talking to you down or in a bad funk consistently, that will rub off on you. It doesn't mean that you're going to be that way. It just means that you're going to probably feel tired or you'll feel like uh, not in balance, right? So that's why I always try my best to control my energy to the best of my ability. Now, if you can't, that's when you should leave, evacuate the situation. If you can't physically leave, put your earphones in, listen to something that makes you feel good. I personally love listening to women or people anyway that talk about Jesus and how he was and it just uplifts me. But you can really listen to anything that's that's a good vibe. Listen to this, right? <laughs> it will make you feel better. But instead of like in your head just cussing them out or saying, oh my God, they did this, like how could they do that and blah, blah, blah. Be like, you know what? That's just how they are. The only thing I can physically do is focus on me and my reaction. I can pray for them, but I can't, we cannot change anyone. And I'm telling you, I used to be that person. I used to be the, I want to change everyone. I want everyone to be the best version of themselves because I want everyone to have the best life. And I do. But in saying that, if they don't want to have a good life, (laughs) okay, (laughs) like what can I physically do? There's only so much we can do. And I know sometimes it hurts you when you really just want someone to see how good things can be because you're like, oh, if only you could see what I see, right? But that's the whole point. 
they don't have the same eyes as you. We could be looking at the exact same tree and you see it the, a different way than I see it, right? So just remember, you cannot change anyone. Anyone. My mom always says that you can change, you can help a baby change, but as soon as they start talking and having their own attitude, they, they adapt their own characteristics. Anyone that's like 16, 17 plus, they have their own way. The only way they'll change is if they want to change. And usually people want to change when they realize in themselves they want more. It's not – or if they see something better, right? But if you keep telling someone, oh, you need to be like this or you need to do this, they're going to probably get annoyed and do the opposite, the opposite. So I always say lead by example, but that's a whole other video. Okay, so if you can't physically leave or evacuate the situation – Try to have a spot in your house or even in your car if you drive, your room, somewhere where it's just your peace. Everyone needs that. Home is honestly where the heart is. I know it's cliche, but it's so true. But in saying that, you also need a spot where you feel the most at home. Jesus would go out to the garden and pray consistently because that's where he felt the closest to God, right? That was his Zen place. So find out where your Zen place is. It could even be your backyard. It could be a park. It could be somewhere where you just go and you're like, oh, I feel good here, right? And I know it's hard going back into that energy and environment, but babes, we've got to do the best we can with the situation that we can do, which leads me to my second point. If you can leave, leave, okay? If you can move or, you know, just like do your own thing for a little while, I 100% recommend. I... Yeah, we like I live with my sister and brother and it's the best thing ever. And don't get me wrong, I love my mom to death, but we left because we're like, okay, this environment isn't helping us anymore. You know, you get to a point where you're like, okay, what what do I want more? My sanity and a better life or just to be traditional and follow what everyone else is going to say because they're going to judge. Right. So you get to a point where you're where you're like, okay, what's more important? If you can leave, I 1 million percent recommend it because your environment plays such a big role in how you feel. It's just the thing. That's why people say, you know, who are your friends? Because then they'll see if you're good or not, right? Or if you're in a happy lifestyle because usually it's how your friends are is how you'll, you'll be. Okay, this is a trick. This is a little trick I do. And I only learned this recently because I, I started to realize I should – put myself first because you know the more you get hurt by by someone you love especially the more you realize you can do the best you can but you also have to be good within yourself and how you be good within yourself is having a strong foundation which means truly making sure you're filling your own cup fill your cup and if you feel like you're not getting something from someone give that back to yourself be like okay you know what I'm going to give that to myself. And I promise you, if you're scared, talk to God because I'm not even kidding. He will bless you. He sees everything that you're going through and he'll be like, you know what? I'm going to give her this because that's what she needs. She's taking this risk. She's taking this step. I'm going to give it to her, right? Or to him. So don't be afraid to do something. Even if you're like, oh, I really want to do this, but I'm scared because of this. No, just do it. Just do it. If it means you being at peace, do it. Okay, D-O-I-T, caps, exclamation mark, do it. Okay, this was my little secret, right? So I've learned to, how do I say, like not zone out, but I have like tunnel vision. So for example, if someone does something that hurts me or makes me feel like, okay, cool, this this wasn't that cool, I'll be like, okay, they're like a ghost I do not see them I do not care I will be I will be respectful right I won't ever disrespect anyone but there is no feeling like I I'm not numb but I'm just like I don't care like you have to get to a point I think where you're just like a bit of a savage because Jesus was a bit of a savage which I love he never stooped down to anyone's level he educated and walked off And that was it. Like he tried to help or tried to get them to see the light and to see him. They chose not to. And even he couldn't force anyone to do anything, right? So if Jesus can't, who thinks? How can you even think that you can, my love? No, 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 no. And even if you make someone do something, they will resent you and they will regret it. 
and they'll hate you you go back and forth right so you have to learn honestly how to be like okay i'm gonna chew them out because i was the type of person oh my love i was the type of person that would like talk and talk and talk and talk and tell people consistently okay you hurt me this is why you did this and like how could you even do this and like why would you think like this and blah blah blah. because to me i couldn't understand how someone else couldn't understand what they were doing was hurtful like it never registered to me and i felt the more i could talk about it maybe they would get it but instead they would get annoyed because they're like oh my god okay i get it and it's like the best way i found effective is to honestly not say anything and just live your life be happy i promise you you will be so much happier because why should you be a puppet to someone else i heard this thing once and it really stuck with me and it's like if someone can and i just want to remind you we're all human even jesus cried so it's okay to have emotions my love but i'm just saying if by the flick of a hat you can get angry upset annoyed you are a puppet you aren't even you are I was going to say you're nothing, but that's like, that's a bit much, right? You are a puppet and people are just pulling your strings and you're just dancing like a little clown, basically. But if you learn how to control your reaction to every emotion as much as you can, right? Because again, we're human. You'll realize that, you know what? Yeah, you can be rude to me. Yeah, you can, you know, not help me out. Yeah, you can degrade me or be angry at me when it's got nothing to do with me. But I'm so content in my life and I'm in a little rainbow. I'm I'm in a little rainbow place and you're in a dark cloud and I don't want to come to the dark cloud. I'm going to keep living the way I'm living. It might annoy them because they're like, why are you so happy, right? But eventually they'll be like, okay, how can I get like that, right? Why would you want to get affected by every single thing someone does or doesn't do to you? Just pick better people distant yourself away from those people even if it's your family you have to because it's your sanity i always say we're going to die in our own grave right even when you die on top of someone you're still in your own tomb you're in your own grave the casket is only you right i mean sometimes i don't know if they, no they don't open i was going to say they don't open no 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 so it's just you it's you and god you're the only one that's going to face god by yourself someone like say for example your brother he's not going to god forbid when he goes to heaven right he's not gonna be like oh wait but my sister's good too she did this no no, no. it's you it's you 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 why are you so why are you letting these people affect you ah uh, what and it's normal right so say you do get annoyed because we're human you can be like okay let me figure out why this is annoying me because I do that. And a lot of the times it's because I just want to be loved the way I love. I want someone to care about me the way I care about me or the way I care about them, right? But you have to understand that people aren't like that. You will care about you the way you care about you, but how you care about someone else, they aren't going to give the same level of love because sometimes they're not capable. Sometimes they don't know how to. And sometimes maybe the way they care about you is different to the way you care about them, right? You have to just learn to accept people how they are and truly be like, you know what? This is how they are. No worries. I'm going to just, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to figure out another way to make me better. I promise you when you switch it and turn it back on you, oh my heart, I promise you, you will live so much more peaceful, so much more peaceful. How annoying is it when you're crying and sad all the time? I don't think anyone likes to feel like that, right? Even the old people, when they complain about who's more sad, deep down, they're like, I don't really want to be this sad, (laughs) you know? So let me just quickly recap. I want you to either, actually, you must have a place in your house, outside or somewhere where it's your happy place, your place to relax, to Zen. And it could even be talking to God, but in a physical place, right? Anyway, because then you are, wiring your brain to be like whenever i go to this spot i'm happy so even if i'm upset and angry i come here and i feel different i feel like i'm lifted i feel lighter it's honestly just a little way to trick your brain because we want to trick her we want her to work for us right so do that if you can leave my love leave 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 trust me sometimes you have better relationships when you're not living under the same roof my mom for example we are like best friends now right 
never been this close ever ever okay and then work on yourself work on being so like be so committed to loving yourself learning about yourself learning how to love your own company being okay making sure you are put first and i'm not saying you shouldn't do things for people i'm a big believer in i will help you because i can because i i really truly believe that when you are blessed enough to help someone you should because there's no greater feeling oh, in this whole world money all that is great yeah but when you help someone it is the most there's, there's no feeling like that it's like love there's no feeling like that right so when you can help someone, I think you should. Even if you feel like, oh, but they don't help me, my love. You're the one that's going to sleep on your pillow and you're gonna want, You're the one that's going to be thinking, oh, why didn't I help them? Now, I'm saying if they're not, if they're being like super rude and savage and like actually like fully, fully toxic, then be like, okay, you can help yourself. Thank you very much. Like if they don't really need you, you know, do, do you can figure out yourself, my love. Like you're going to be a bit, a little bit of a savage, right? A cute savage. <laughs> But I'm telling you, working on yourself is the probably the best thing. Getting closer to God is the best thing because you realize you can only do so much as a physical being, but protecting your energy, oh my gosh, like the whole smoke thing, you can only do so much if you're in a room full of smokers. If you're in a room full of black, dark clouds that are raining consistently and you're this little cute sunshine rainbow, um, like little sunflower hopping around trying to be cute, you can only touch so many people to help them see that light. But some people will still turn away, right? And I know it's hard and I I really, really do know it's hard, you know, to want someone to be a type of way when you just know they can't or they won't. But it's the most liberating thing when you can just smile and laugh and feel so good knowing that you're doing the best you can. Because you really are. You're watching this. That means you're doing the best you can, right? That means you want to do better. Now, let's take some action steps because I feel like it's one thing to listen to this and it's a whole nother thing to do something about it. And I used to be the type where I'd read books. I'd listen to 100,000 million YouTube videos. I did nothing. I just knew the information. You can know something. doesn't mean you're going to do it. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. This is our homework together. Find a place. It can be like literally a corner. <laughs> it doesn't have to be anywhere big. It can be anywhere, literally anywhere. My One of my places is the shower. Oh my God. When I'm in the shower, even if I'm upset, I feel so good. I don't know how to explain it. It's my time to just, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm just washing the day away and I love to sing. I like to play good music or I just, it's my me time. It's like fully me. I'm taking care of me, you know? So that's my, that's my little place, right? The shower. If you know, you know. My neighbors see me all the time. Don't you worry. <laughs> so find a place. I found one. It's my shower. And then and it doesn't matter if you share it with other people. Like everyone showers, right? But it's my place. When it's, I'm in the shower, it's my shower, okay? And then I want you to write down something that you think you need to work on. So for example, if you feel like you're triggered consistently by how people are talking to you and how people are reacting to something you want from them, be like, okay, what can I do to help me with that? Because I can only do so much. I can only control me. So what can I do? Hmm. Okay. For example, I would write, okay, maybe I can just, if I say something and I get hurt by it, like, because it's not the response I want, no worries. I'm going to just remove myself from the situation and I'm not going to think about it until later when I, I can clear my mind instead of having all these negative thoughts. And I'm just going to be like, okay, how can I do it for myself? Or who else can I help? Who else can I ask? Or what else can I do to make sure that I'm going to be taken care of? You know what I mean? When you, when you just reiterate it to yourself and be like, okay, Maybe I need someone else. Maybe I need to find a new friend. Okay, how can I find a new friend? There are a thousand million Facebook groups. TikTok, I have found so many friends of TikTok, which oh, I love you. If you know, you know. And putting myself out there, it's like kind of scary, but it's also like, meh. What's the worst they're going to say? No? Cool. No worries. It's fine. It's like, I, it doesn't it doesn't phase me. And then with that, with asking yourself, focus on one thing that you can do to better you. Like, 
now you've you've kind of focused on yourself and you're like, okay, how can I heal? Like, how can I not get triggered by this? Focus on one good thing about you and really feed that. Like, f- you know, with flowers, even below grease, you know, with flowers, when you keep watering them and you talk good words to them and you show them love, they blossom, they bloom, they are bright. Do that for yourself. So let's focus, for example, I was going to say my hair, but I'm only learning to love it. So let's be completely honest. Let's talk about something else. I love my eyes, right? Let's talk about something internal, actually. I love that I am very patient. I'm, I'm, I'm quite patient, I must say. Like when my mom, when I was teaching my mom and dad to use their phone, let me tell you, <laughs> sometimes they would ask the exact same question 150 times, but I genuinely can't even get, I can't get annoyed at it because I'm like, I heard this the other day and it's like, if you're confused, that's good because that means you're learning something new. So subconsciously, I thought that anyway, because I'm like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. And like, I know, might as well just try help them. And they, my dad used to FaceTime me. Can you imagine like a wog dad FaceTiming? He didn't even like, he didn't even know how to dial. Like he still did it. He never learned how to message, which is fine. But he would FaceTime me. My mom sends me um, emojis. What the freak? She knows how to use YouTube. She knows how to use Google. Like, I'm sorry, but that's shocking. But that's all because I was patient with her, right? And now she has so much fun. And that to me makes me feel like I'm doing something right, right? So I focus on that. I'm like, you know what? God has blessed me with patience. I'm not saying I'm 100% patient. I'm still human. But I focus on that. And that's what holds me. That's what keeps me grounded knowing that, okay, you know what? I, I can still be patient. I, can, I need more patience, obviously. But I'm patient. It's all right. God's blessed me with this. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Because every time someone is doing something to hurt you, think of how that's helping shape you. Okay. This person, mm, this person is talking down to me. They keep talking down to me. Okay. It's triggering me because maybe I believe what they're saying. I don't, I clearly don't respect myself enough or love myself enough that that's why when they're saying something mean, I'm like, okay, they're, they're, they're like reading my mind to all the negative things I say about myself and now they're saying it you get what I mean so like no one can hurt you or it's much harder for someone to hurt you if you are so much more content with how you feel about yourself it's all comes down to yourself honestly so focus on something internally that you love and then that way when someone talks when someone says something bad about you and it's always like wogs or like really older people that are completely savage and say the weirdest things but it could be even like an ex or someone that you're with right now and you're struggling to let go like how who are they even who are they even to even like and and you are who like ill you know have that like ill like i i just you just don't want to care you don't want to give your care beautiful factor your energy to someone that doesn't deserve it like why 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 oh i just cannot cannot and every time i feel like i'm gonna get there i'm like hold the hell up god you need to check me because clearly i'm fuzzy (laughs) i'm being a bit fuzzy here you know anyways i really hope this video has helped you in some way because i promise you it's I know it's harder than it is. Like, I know it's easy to say something than it is to do something. But I really believe it all comes back down to you. It all comes back down to how you choose to see it. Every time, now when I look back at it, when I used to have people um, that I couldn't just leave because they were a part of someone I was seeing, they would talk down to me consistently and make it a joke, right? And I used to get so upset. And now when I look back at it, I'm like, it was because I believed everything they were saying because I didn't think good about myself whereas when I now when I thank god I'm at a good, really good place in my life when people say bad things to me on TikTok especially I truly I'm not even just saying I literally pray for them like I truly hope god blesses you that you can remove this hatred or whatever is in your heart away because like come on like why and it's it's worse when obviously you you know the person and they are a part of your life because you're like, do you know me? Like, why are you acting this way to me? But I read this one thing the other day and, and I'll end it here. And it was basically 
everyone has flaws. Everyone has something they're dealing with. We're all on this journey, on this beautiful life together, and we're all dealing with things. And it could be the closest person to you and you still don't know what's in their head, right? Just remember that there are so many things that you probably don't like about this person, that the way they're talking to you or treating you or whatever, right? And I'm not trying to excuse bad behavior. If it's bad, just like I said earlier, leave. But if it's like someone you literally can't get away from, you're like, okay, this is how they are. I'm sure there are things about me that they probably, I'm like, okay, I just have to deal with this, right? So be like, okay, I'm just going to learn to accept them. And this is how they are. And I, I will pray for them. I will do the best I can. But at the same time, I'm going to lean all the way back and let them be them. And f- like now, given how they're talking to me and how they're treating me or how they're, what they're doing, what they're not doing for me, I now know where I can come to them and where I cannot come to them. You know? So you just kind of shift the way you react in a certain way because I don't think you can be your 100% self to every single person. I think we have all different, we have beautiful layers to us and we give those layers to different people because not everyone deserves a whole onion. I just thought of an onion. I don't know why. <laughs> layers, you know, but we're not going to be crying over here. So yeah, I I know it's tough, but I truly also believe God doesn't, God doesn't put us through anything if there's not a greater purpose to it. And I can truly wholeheartedly say I'm so grateful for every single thing that's happened in my life because every single thing has happened for good. And sometimes I couldn't see it. And I still probably am a bit fuzzy with it, but I know it's good. I just know. Even if it was bad, it was good. You know, there's like, there's good in literally every single thing. There are some things that are so tragic, but from that, there will be something good. There just has to be. It's just, I just think that's the way it has to be. And I, I'm tr- choosing to believe that because that's the life I want to live. And if you want to join me in La La Land, come right in. And if you don't, that's fine. Enjoy whatever land you want to live in, you know? <laughs> All right, my loves, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this helped you. Let me know what you want to talk about next, what you want me to talk about next. I feel like we're on this journey together and I'm going to definitely be writing some stuff down to figure it out. But yeah, I love you all so much. I appreciate you for watching and I will see you in the next podcast. I'm going to be doing one every week. I'm not sure what day yet, but it will be consistent every week until like when I'm overseas, it might be a bit different because I'm going to have my phone, but we're going to make it work. I might pre-record or something. But anyways, love ya. Bye.